is up guys and welcome back to of course our week one battle in of course the Mount Moon Battle Association season 3 and we're going up against the Chattanooga Chess not my good friend Rudy and I want to talk about of course the team I'm bringing as you guys can see on the screen uh, you can see both our teams and of course the sixth member that made it so a quick rundown here Rudy's team is really really scary we have Mana Fee, Mammoth Swine, Nihilego, uh, Lola Marowak, Mega Pidgeot, Chimin, Rhyperior, Togetic, uh, Ambipalm, Gustlo, Prime, and Mushana. So the overarching theme here is that he has very, very good Scarfers. And he has the Lola Marowak, which a Lola Marowak is not super intimidating, but at the same time, it is a Pokemon that are defensively really well-rounded and works really well towards my team, where my offensive uh, scariest mods are actually kind of checked by it, such as, of course, Heracross and, of course, Verizion. So, by that logic, they actually got thrown out naturally. Uh, two other mods that got thrown out naturally was, of course, Gigalith, which in general makes sense for this team, because, of course, it does deal with both, of course, and Lola Marowak to some extent, and uh, Mega Pidgeot somewhat. Uh, the reason they didn't make it was for one reason. Uh, I need sand, of course, you sand that properly. Uh, one big issue with that is that both Nihilego and, of course, Rhyperior gets a defensive boost by themselves. They are naturally a lot scarier than what my Gigalith can be doing. So with that in mind, I still need a defensive rocker. And the only one that is left is, of course, Necrozma. And it's a definitely a more defensive variant here. Not being able to shake, of course, is a Lowland Marowak whatsoever. Which is bad. It's really bad. Um, outside of that, Jolteon makes sense for this Wi-Fi battle in general. Because it does get a combination of Shadow Ball and, of course, Thunderbolt. Uh, could easily deal with, of course, a Lowland Marowak who could be a potential switching. But most importantly, it is faster than his Mega Pidgeot. And it could be a very, very important thing. Uh, one thing that I have is actually hidden power. Um, I do believe I have Silver for Grass to be able to deal with Rhyperior, which to me is a Gust Lord is walling this Jolteon to some extent because Last Moves is actually substitute. In case, of course, I'm seeing some kind of shenanigans going on again, a free opening, uh, that's what I'm going to try to do. So, with that said, those two Pokemon were very, very easy to set here. Uh, the rest here is basically are they needed, and if not, why aren't they? And uh, Garbodor does not make sense here. Um, it could be a mod that could deal with Shukaberry, of course, in mind, deal very well with his Shaman. But at the same time, I don't think Garbodor is going to get that many openings because there are a lot of Pokemon here that does well against it. The so ones that stands out is, of course, Mammoth Swan, who just ruins it. And uh, just outside of that, Prime, we can definitely solve that. And, of course, Mushana. So there are a lot of issues with bringing Garbodor. So it's, it's thrown out naturally by, of course, its defensive responses alone, which aren't that many. When so what we got left now is, of course, um, Kyurem, Cortana, Tabafini, uh, Entei, and, of course, Swellow. And those are the only ones that are left to be able to actually utilize here. And it was rather easy. Kyurem B with Isium C, just a lot of damage. Um, the Earth Power combination here does really well. Fusion Ball hurts most of his team. Kyurem B just naturally are one of those Pokemon that... It stands out. It does a lot of damage naturally, and it's not easy to KO for my opponent. Even with, of course, Cloak Comma for, of course, Primeape, I'm still kind of good to go, though clearly that's a situation I do not want to be in. But yeah, Primeape for me is probably one I scare. It scares me the most using Curem, but that's the route I have to take, because it deals well with, the, of course, Manaphy, and it does deal to some extent well with being a Pidgeot, and of course, it's not walled up with Marowak, because Tetra... Or Terravolt, something like that is called, is it not, uh, make sure the Lightning Rod is not affecting it. Uh, I saw that type of Fini as a natural response to a Marowak is also important. It's not super well-rounded for this battle, but the Calm Mind subset with, of course, Moonblast and Surf are really doing at best neutral damage against the whole team and should be able to do really well. Because his defensive Pokemon, if they don't have Toxic, they can't affect type of Fini, such as, of course, Togetic. Gustlur can't do anything, Mushana can't necessarily do anything, Nihilego can't necessarily do anything outside of, of course, the likes of Sludge Wave. So, there are a few options here which makes Tabafina really well, and also can deal with, of course, Mammoth One, who could be a very, very scary Pokemon to deal with. That said, though, Manaphy is probably one that could force this Pokemon out naturally. Tail Glow tend to do that, <laughs> so that's something I need to watch out for. Uh, and I'm, I'm bringing, of course, a Scarfed Cortana, uh, with enough speed, I would speed up plus one Manaphy if it is so that he's C-Rain, 
which uh, could be a very, very scary for me to report with dealing with. Um, so it's actually an adamant set and should be do well, well-ish against this team. Um, I was optimized for a team variant, but at the same time, there are Pokemon that can force me out that I'm not easily killing. Um, and in the end of the day, that's kind of what you want. So um, I, I need to find a better option here. Plus, um, I need a plus one speed to be able to outspeed, of course, make a Pidgeot naturally, and that's something that could be very annoying. I'd rather outspeed it naturally than not, not at all. So for the last Pokemon, I'm sorry, John, I actually recorded this early in the morning, gonna feel that should probably wait a few seconds. But yeah, uh, last Pokemon is Swellow. Uh, did optimize between Entei and Swellow, and it came down to this. Swellow can spam Boombers against everything and to it kill almost anything outside of actually the right period. And it is a big factor here. Entei sure as hell can come in against Marowak, but Bonerang is also a thing. I do not want to optimize myself for a possible Bonerang and switch an Entei only to try to soak something just to miss the Stone Edge. So Swellow actually wanted kill <laughs> a lot of Marowak because Boombers is just that scary. So it was easy to implement, but I need to watch out for a few things here, as you guys already may you may not know. Gustlord is super scary if it is an Assault Vest variant. Manaphy could definitely go against me one with one as a Rain Dance set. And uh, Alolan Marowak still is scary. I still have no proper switching towards it. So with all this said, let's of course see the matchup we got. So, we got a very different team here. Uh, we do not see Shaman, we do not see Primeape, and um, while those factors are good, there's still a Pokemon here that I may or may not actually prep for all that well, and um, it could be punishing us really, really, really well here. Um, one positive thing is that due to, of course, not seeing uh, Primeape, I can definitely leave with my Cure in Black and just go from ICMC turn 1, as long as there's a mana piece leading with. And of course, Amipom fake out shenanigans is... Um, it's annoying. I have a few fragile Pokemon that may very well not like this. And also not seeing Mamoswine is definitely a relief. Uh, I do believe a Scarf variant would have been very, very tough for me with dealing with if I lose Kurtana. So not being forced to think about that is... Um, it's important. But yeah, outside of that, nothing really to it. I really, really was up to all so whether or not what Rude has been prepping for. I felt that I do have some matchup advantages, but at the same time, I don't know what his Pokemon are. Mega Pidgeot is always an issue. Uh, as long as Jolton is active, Mega Pidgeot isn't that big of an issue, but it's still a issue, and that's something I don't want to deal with. Swellow, can, of course, can boom burst it, but as an overall theme, Mega Pidgeot is something that I simply can't switch into naturally. Jolto can do it once, and that's it. So, yeah, with all this said, let's, of course, go into the match. So, from the get-go, he's gonna start off with Mega Pidgeot, which I felt was really good. I'm just gonna go directly for the ICMC or the Sub-Zero Slammer. Uh, the main reason for that is because I really just need the damage. I need to hurt something really, really badly. And the Hurricane will not kill me. He just switch out to go directly for the Lowland Marowak. Which I felt, alright, this is a 50% hit. This is gonna do, well, a lot of damage, clearly. And I get a very, very good opening already. Because I need any kind of damage towards this Pokemon. Because it is not only annoying. It is also one of those Pokemon that eventually could bring me down. So getting this damage here, super important. But I don't do all that much. Which tells me... He is very, very, very physically defensive, which also means that Earth Power is a guaranteed KO no matter what here. So he just stay in and loses his Hellenormal Marowak to, of course, this, which is very, very unfortunate for Rudy. It's, it gets him in a bad spot and also means that we now do not have to fear anything when it comes to, of course, any shenanigans that we could go for. Uh, he actually sends him Manaphy here, which I felt was really surprising. I was fearing the Sea Rain, so I went directly for the Fusion Bolt, just doing as much damage as possible. As he actually gonna go for a psychic, and uh, it is okay. Um, it definitely didn't do anything towards us, as we're just gonna keep going for, of course, focus blasts. And uh, now Manaphy is gone, and Kyurem got two kills just from the get go. And I really, really am in a spot where I definitely feel like pressuring Rudy quite a lot. Now, Amipom is different though, since he has a low kick, is a Pokemon that definitely can go for that. So, just gonna send in Jaws, my. Uh, mine across my and uh, Loki is gonna do just about nope. Should do just about nope. 
And I suspecting here that he could very well be bringing the likes of Gustlor. Do not think he's gonna carry knockoff here. Uh, even if it's a possibility, I will get the item from Toxic. As a sensing Gustlor, Gist Lord. And we do get the Toxic on this Gustlor, which is very important because Necrozma itself can't do anything to uh, this Pokemon. It could have an Exorcist, it definitely can. But I have chosen the route of being super, 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 super defensive with Self Rock, which means. That we're not gonna do necessarily anything. So we have Psychic, Toxic, Self Rock, and actually Moonlight. So with that said, I'm gonna switch out, gonna go to Arexi, which of course is my Tabu Fini, who should be able to wall this Pokemon. That said, I am very aware of that this Pokemon gets Belch, and he could very well be Sea Belch too, and that's not gonna be an optimized play, even though I can't possibly survive it. Though, with that said, uh, I'm just going to go straight on at it for, I do believe, a substitute here to kind of scout for it. I'm definitely faster. So, he likely switching out and goes to his Togetic. And um, at the moment, I felt, you know, he could. He could actually go for Nasty Plot and Baton Pass and get uh, Mega Pidgeot to a very, very scary area where I'm forced to sack something. And the only thing that I actually can deal with is Jolteon. But not after a nasty plot, not whatsoever. Um, so I went for a call mine here, just trying to get as much uh, boost as possible. As I see dazzling gleam, and I'm like, yeah, okay, that's that's okay. We are not. He's not gonna break my sub, which is just one of those things that just is incredible. As I'm just going for direct for Moonblast. It should be said, I do not do enough. I, I I'm plus one. That does what is that? Twenty five percent tops. But we do get a special attack decrease, which means the next Dazzling Gleam will not KO me or not not break my sub either. Which, you know, I, I felt bad for Rudy here. He's definitely in a very, very tough spot as he's going to bring in his course, his Gust Lord, yet again. And um, he has to have, I do believe, Kissy Bear or something like that to be able to reduce the Moonblast damage. But a plus one, that's not going to help. Surprisingly, I should say, Gustlor is still a very, 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 very HP. I was going to say bulky. That's that's wrong. A lot of HP should be able to take it. I really thought it would be able to take it, even if I was plus one. So I lose, of course, my Misty Terrain, but as a right, as we're going to see hand jobs, I feel like, you know, fake out, probably break the sub, or, um, of course, gunk shot, because why not? As I realize that, yeah, you know, gunk shot probably KOs me. It's, it's highly likely if it connects that, that that's going to KO. As I was really hoping Surfier would do enough to KO it. Uh, I should probably take an opportunity to set up completely. I didn't do that. And this is the result of it. Abipom doesn't survive. So with that said, I need to switch out. And as I stated here, I could... I am a Scarfed uh, Cortana for this battle. So I was feeling that, alright, let's do this. You know, I could just lock myself to Smart Strike and go for a wrap up. Well, he does outspeed me. Uh, so that's the first indication that I have the wrong item. But not only that... I am actually life orb, and that's a very, very bad thing because now that means the Mega Pidgeot can just come in, and I brought the wrong item to this game, which is very, 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 very bad. As the bird, Jesus, the Mega Pidgeot is gonna come in, and I can't stop this. I need to switch out if I want to preserve my Zigzo here versus versus Rudy, because the guys may or may not already know this. It's highly unlikely that no matter what my opponent here brings, that he can't get an opening here towards me to be able to wrap up the game. But he can go for Differential, which is exactly what he's going to try to do. As he goes for Hurricane, and it doesn't do over 50% towards us. And as I stated here before of course, the matchup, I am a leftovers set more bulkier with just enough speed to speed to make a Pidgeot. So I'm not actually that specially offensive, though I do have special attack, but I'm not fully specially offensive because I don't need it. As we're going to knock out Pidgeot, and his last Pokemon is a Togetic. And um, I will say this, I got a bit greedy. Uh, as Togetic come in, I, do, I know I can possibly do it, kill it, as Thunderbolt does it just about right. But I really, really wanted to send in my um, uh, Swallow uh, to be able to wrap it up with a Boom Burst was my initial thought. Uh, what I failed to realize is that Togetic, while not this most specially offensively scary Pokemon is still going to do a lot of damage to, of course, Azuelo, which definitely is not very, very bulky. And I'm not sure Boombers will KO from this range, so I actually copped out and <laughs> went into Ordreal basically to wrap up, which of course a smart strike as it goes for Roost, and that's alright, because since we're Adam and Life Orb instead of Scarf, 
Uh, we're gonna do a, a whole lot of different damage here. It's gonna just annihilate this if I like so it takes. So that's a 6 0 victory in my favor. And I really, really am sorry, Rudy. So, yeah, what the hell happened? I do believe that's it. It's an important factor to kind of talk about because I don't believe this game represents Rudy's caliber as a Wi Fi battler. It definitely has more with that he lost a bit too much momentum from turn one and i do believe my lead here was definitely the one that kind of settled it uh, losing marowak was one of those things that meant that the pokemon such as of course cortana got a lot scarier and um quite honestly i think my my matchup here was really well rounded uh, missing out on shaman and primate and mammoth swan may or may not actually have been scarier for me to be dealing with. I definitely don't think uh, Abipalm or Gust Lord was game changers for this Wi Fi battle, such as, of course, Togetic was definitely one of those of more interesting. Uh, and as I said, the Mammoth Swine and Shaman or even Primate, Scarf Primate would have been so nice here. So I think Rudy missed out on that, but at the same time, he did decide for 12 Pokemon. And it's when you have a draft of 12 Pokemon, there are a lot of faulty options that's gonna happen. I mean, hell. I was not adjusting myself for Ambipon whatsoever, and it could have backfired. Uh, I do find out later here after the battle that it was like a Scarf Ambipon, and that could very well have threw me off, especially since my idea was for a Scarf Cortana in general. So, uh, to Rudy, as I said, I'm sorry it went down the way it did. Um, I, and also, it doesn't represent, of course, his caliber battle. I really want to say that. But with that said, you know, we are 1 0 from week 1. That's nice. I really needed that. And a 6 0 at that. Um, that clearly shows, um, well, how good my draft is. I I'm not gonna say how well I play because I didn't play necessarily that good, but I could just I could rely so heavily on the matchup or, or the Pokemon I had for this matchup to just exist. And Tabu Phoenixurum just knocked it out of the park. They were they got such a great lead wave from the get go, and it just it wasn't any comeback there. Once his offense, his great offensive Pokemon was gone. There was nothing holding them back, and I think you really realized that too. Uh, so that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this battle, and of course, check me out next week where we are gonna face off against another team. I haven't really looked into it yet. <laughs> hey! <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next video. Until then, of course, take care.